The bomber will always get through. This is a famous quote by Stanley Baldwin, a British politician, in 1932. The phrase has taken on many meanings in the years since, but it basically means that air defenses alone cannot stop a large bomber attack. The validity of the quote seems to have flipped back and forth many times over the years. Waves of bombers in World War II faced massive anti-aircraft artillery threatening their mission. With the development of extremely accurate bomb sites, they were able to switch to high altitude bombing out of the range of AAA. The development of surface to air missiles, which could reach these high altitudes, again threatened the future of the bomber. To counter that, both superpowers developed supersonic bombers, which could quickly fly in, hit their targets, and escape, using their speed to increase the chance of survival. As missile technology rapidly advanced, it was clear that this was not enough. Enter stealth. So if you can't fly high enough or fast enough to escape air defenses, how about you make yourself invisible? The B-2 was the first strategic stealth bomber, and pretty soon, its replacement, the B-21, will be taking over. As of right now, the first aircraft are already under production. But first, this episode's sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. This sponsor was absolutely perfect for me. A few months ago, I stopped using my old, bulky wallet. It was really annoying to carry around. When I heard of Ridge Wallet, it was a perfect fit for me. I've been using it myself, and I'm going to continue to use it. It's small, sleek, looks good, and works great. Another great thing is it's guaranteed for life. So if it wears down or loosens, you're covered. It also came with this mini screwdriver to tighten the screws if necessary. You also get 10% off with promo code COVERTCABAL, no space. Go check them out. That is the Ridge Wallet. Most people know stealth does not make an aircraft invisible, but it can have the same effect at adequate ranges, depending on the radar looking for it. The B-2 stealth bomber changed the game. It has no missiles or flares or chaff to defend itself if attacked, no ability to run away from a fight, and can't pull more than two Gs while turning. It has to rely solely on itself to survive. Development of the B-2 was hampered in some ways, sacrificing some of its stealthy characteristics for ability to perform low-altitude bombing missions. The potential enemy at the time was the Soviet Union, a nation littered with highly capable early warning radars. Despite its state-of-the-art stealth technology, the United States Air Force realized stealth alone would not save the bomber from being able to carry out its mission, so they changed the shape to perform better at low altitudes, enabling it to fly in below Soviet radar coverage. In the years since, radar technology has improved. A new solution is needed. Development of the next stealth bomber began in 2004. The program was originally known as the Next Generation Bomber. This was a much more ambitious program, including the ability to operate independently and possibly include hypersonic technology, air launch ballistic missiles, and more. This was eventually canceled and replaced with the LRSB, or Long Range Strike Bomber. The program seems to go back to the original design for the B-2 shaped and laid out in a manner to increase its stealthiness. The program benefits from decades of experience with the B-2, figuring out what works, what doesn't, what is important for a stealth bomber to have and what isn't, and where it can be improved. Many details about the B-21 are still classified, but based on released information and renderings, it will likely be another flying wing, similar to the B-2, subsonic, and have an emphasis on stealth with its shaping, coating, and recessed air intakes. Another interesting specification for the B-21 is its ability to operate with a crew on board or remotely as a UCAV. It will carry a wide range of weaponry, both present operational weapons and space for future ones. One real interesting question will be what kind of sensors it will have. We saw the F-35 equipped with an electro-optical targeting system, giving it an incredible air-to-ground capability over previous US aircraft. It's likely that the B-21 will incorporate some sort of similar sensor. As for radar, a stealth bomber needs to be extremely careful what signals it puts out, as doing so can give away its position. The B-2 does have one, the APQ-181. It's a low probability of intercept phased array radar, which means exactly that, being able to operate its radar while having a reduced chance of being detected. The APQ-181 was designed specifically for the B-2, and the B-21 will likely have its own, similar, but more modern radar. One extremely important facet of the B-21 will be communications. The last two decades has seen a rapid development of methods of sharing information between units. The B-21 will be able to both detect and transmit enemy location information back to other units, and receive information from others. This might not sound like much, but it's extremely important. Previously, 
unless a bomber could see the enemy for itself, it couldn't attack. It needed to fly right up, find a target, and hit it. Or it had to rely on intelligence collected by other means, which by the time the bomber was in position was already dated and the situation could have changed. These new capabilities allow real-time sharing of vital information for the people who need it the most. Also, as a side note, you might be wondering, why the B-21? We had the B-1, B-2, so why not the B-3? The 21 refers to the notion that this is a 21st century bomber. With incredibly capable air defense systems like the S-400, powerful new radars which can increase the detection range of stealth aircraft, and technologies such as infrared search and track that do not rely on radar, it's worth asking the question, why build another stealth bomber? You can only do so much to reduce the detection range with a stealth aircraft. It's never going to make it completely invisible. Even if the B-21 is a hundred times more stealthy than the B-2, it would never survive flying directly over and drop bombs on a target that is well defended by modern air defenses. It just isn't going to happen without large numbers of escorts, jamming aircraft, and suppression of enemy air defenses. It will, however, be viable against an enemy with an older, less capable air defense network. This has been the same role that the B-2 is playing. The B-2 never went up against the Soviet Union. Instead, it's seen combat in nations like Kosovo, Iraq, and Libya. These nations, at the time, were armed with Cold War-era surface-to-air missile systems, and the B-2 performed perfectly. Not one was shot down. It's safe to assume that the B-21 will be more capable, at least in terms of stealth, than the B-2 so it will be able to continue carrying out this role against less capable enemies for the foreseeable future. But against highly capable air defense systems, like that of Russia or China, a different role is likely. Standoff range weapons, like cruise missiles, air launch ballistic missiles, and glide bombs, have allowed attacking aircraft to stay out of the reach of these increasingly capable SAMs. But if the B-21 plans on carrying standoff weapons, then what is the need for stealth? Systems like the S-400 have incredibly long ranges, but still cannot outreach weapons like Jazz and Miar. However, interceptor aircraft can. Once a bomber is detected by early warning radar, fighters can and will be scrambled and fly out to intercept it. A stealth bomber would likely remain undetected at these long ranges, so intercept aircraft wouldn't know it's there and not take off. This can allow quick strikes without risking alerting the enemy. Another possible role might not be as a bomber at all, the U.S. hasn't developed a manned reconnaissance aircraft in years. In the late 1950s, we saw the U-2, later the SR-71. With the rise of highly effective surface-to-air missile systems, it became too risky to get that close with manned systems. The reconnaissance role largely switched to space-based assets, and recently, unmanned systems. We've seen numerous stealthy, flying-wing UAVs, similar in basic appearance to the B-2, the X-47B, the RQ-170, and the RQ-180, for example. It's possible that the B-21 could be used at times to gather and relay information between assets from a frontline position, something not possible with non-stealth manned aircraft. Then, if it's armed with weapons, it could be quickly sent in to attack targets. And finally, it'll play a role as part of the United States nuclear triad, carrying current and future nuclear weapons, possibly the LRSO, which is designed to replace the ALCM, it will modernize the bomber component of the triad, keeping it a viable deterrent for decades to come. A major drawback of stealth is cost. Calculating aircraft cost is difficult, but for the B-2, the flyaway cost per aircraft, not counting development cost, averaged $1.5 billion each when adjusted for inflation. The sunk cost, which does include development cost, comes out to around $4.5 billion per aircraft with inflation. That's a lot of money. By comparison, one Arle Burke class destroyer in 2020 cost $1.8 billion. Also, the cost per flight hour is higher for stealth aircraft. The B-2 costs more than twice as much as the B-1B for each hour of flight. Most of that is due to the maintenance required. For every hour the B-2 flies, it requires on average 60 hours of maintenance. The aircraft's stealth coating is the lead contributor to this long maintenance time. It is extremely sensitive compared to non-stealth aircraft, requiring special climate-controlled hangars to store them. Lessons learned from the B-2 will undoubtedly be incorporated into the B-21. This should, in theory, cut back on some of the cost in constructing and operating the aircraft. The stated goal is to have the B-21 cost $650 million each, 
again adjusted for inflation. This is the procurement cost, not including development costs. Total cost, including development, will really depend on how many are built. The development costs are roughly the same regardless if you buy 10 aircraft or 1,000, meaning the more you purchase, the lower the total cost per aircraft will be, as that cost can be spread out over more units. Also, the construction cost becomes less per unit, as the same factory can produce more and parts can be purchased in bulk. Initial procurement plan is for 80 to 100 bombers, with the possibility of up to 200 total. As with virtually every military project, costs go up. It's likely the aircraft will end up costing much more than planned. As costs go up, the government will likely have to cut procurement numbers. And cutting procurement numbers means the costs go up even more, as the development costs and costs to build the factories remain constant. Also, new programs always cost the most in the beginning. As the program matures, prices drop. Then again, as they age, costs increase. It's a typical life cycle of operating costs. We are seeing this now with the F-35. The average price per aircraft has dropped from $200 million in 2012 to $115 million in 2020. So it will be interesting to see just how many B-21s are produced. And finally, the US isn't the only nation working on a stealth bomber. Both Russia and China have devoted large amounts of time and research into their own bombers. Russia, with their PAC-DA, which seems to have run into financial and technical difficulties. While Russia has discussed building a stealth aircraft for several decades, China has made huge leaps in stealth technology, already now operating the stealthy J-20. China now has plans for a stealth bomber, the H-20. Very little is known about the aircraft, but with China's rapid advancement in military technology, it's very likely that we will be seeing a lot more of it in the near future. From what we do know, likely all three will look similar operate at subsonic speeds, and relying on stealth. I think it's an interesting point, especially in the era of hypersonic technology emerging. Clearly, each nation still believes that stealth is the future, and putting their money where their mouth is.